we've seen talking about the distances between data points, between objects, uh, when we have a bunch of numbers, okay? If we have a bunch of fields and they're all numbers, uh, yeah, then we can talk about those, uh, those methods. Uh, what do we do when we don't have numbers? Gosh, that's going to be a tough one. I'm going to punt a little bit on that one. But also, what do we do when we have numbers, but they're numbers that have nothing to do with each other, okay? So uh, in the previous video, I had an example of, say, a, a dating site where you have you know, preferences on how much you like, what uh, spicy food, hiking, and video games. And you can say, hey, each of those is on a 1 to 10 scale. They're sort of comparable, you know, diff a difference of 5 on that scale and difference of 5 on this scale might be comparable in some way. Um, okay, but what if we have, I don't know, uh, I'm thinking about, uh, and a long time ago, by the way, I talked about having a whole bunch of Booleans. So that's actually... A, yeah, you know, makes sense. Uh, we can call it zero and one and talk about this distance. Um, or even if I have values that are between zero and one, then all those metric things that I have, like, is this movie at a comedy? Or how much of comedy is it on scale from zero to one? How much of a drama is it on scale of zero to one? Uh, et cetera. So those are all, I could use the existing topics we talked about this and choose some of the other norms, maybe tweak them a little bit. Um, you might even think about weighting some categories higher than others. Maybe a difference in preference on hiking is smaller than a preference on spicy food in your dating site. But what do we do when we have something like, hey, I have a song, and I want to go ahead and cluster songs and say these two songs are very close to each other and these two songs are very far from each other. And I might go ahead and just say, hey, I'm going to deal with uh, the duration, uh, it's average rating from a bunch of users, uh, what year it was released, whether or not it's copyrighted, uh, maybe beats per minute, uh, all sorts of uh, different things there. Um, and certainly, you know, the artist of the song and the title of the song, maybe a genre of a song. Gosh, might have 10 genres. Um, what is the distance between, you know, country and rock and roll and death metal? Uh, kind of hard to put that into numbers. So I'm not going to worry so much about that. If I do have all numbers, though. Okay, great. Uh, I can go ahead and what metric should I use? So let's just say I have uh, the duration, the rating, the copyright, and if they're, uh, sorry, duration, rating, year, and whether or not they're copyrighted. So I'm going to have things like, uh, What's the difference from a song whose values are 45 to 1995 and false to a song that has values 300, 5, 2017, and true? Um, gosh, so one thing I might do is I might decide to minimize this window. Go away. Thank you. Um, I might decide to go and weight each field a certain amount. I'd go ahead and use the L2 norm or the L3 norm or the L1 norm. I would think about using L1 or L infinity for things like this, um, like we talked about. Uh, but I also might sort of say, hey, you know, uh, the I think the rating is really important and the duration in seconds, that's not so important. So I might go ahead and um, as I go ahead and take the difference and then I multiply them, or sorry, then I add them all up. Before I add them all up, I might multiply important things by a big number or equivalently small values by a number less than one um, to make them more, contribute more to the distance between two songs, okay? If you have a big, dis uh, big distance in the rating column, I want that to translate to a big distance between the two songs. Um, whereas a big distance in the um, duration yeah, is not going to be a, that big a deal in, in the overall distance between two songs. Okay, so that's one thing I might do is to weight each field. What if I have Booleans? I might go ahead and turn false and true into zero and one. That seems possible. And again, I might, there I definitely might want to be scaling things um, before I do the comparison. Um, what about strings? You know, the artist, the title, the genre. Um, gosh, uh, maybe I could take for two, the distance between two strings is the edit distance between them. Maybe it's the length of the string. Maybe it's the number of syllables. Maybe it's, gosh, has something to do with the language that the, the string is in. Uh, for artist names, you want similar artists to somehow be similar or close to each other. And I don't know how you do that just from the string. That's, that's going to be tough. You might just sort of say, is it the same artist or not? Or, um, of course, they didn't worry about Elvis Costello and 
um, Elvis Costello and the Temptations. Wait, is that there? I can't even remember. That's how old I am. Anyway, uh, things like that you want to worry about. Uh, there are similar band names that are intentionally similar, and then there are names that might seem a little bit similar but are not. Okay. Um, so again, I'm not going to worry about how to turn strings into numbers or the distance between two strings. I'll, I'll let you think about that. But here's what I want to say is that, gosh, even if I scale things, um, the difference between the number of seconds, 45 seconds versus 300 seconds, okay, versus the difference between the year, 1995 and 2017, um, and then 2000, you know, that's a pretty big musical genre. It's uh, really changed a lot in those years. Um, so yeah, I might want to say there's a big difference there. Even if I weight them, I have a problem that, gosh, uh, the difference in years versus the difference in seconds, those are just different units. If I square seconds, I mean, maybe I should convert the uh, year into time since 0 BC in seconds. And that way, when I square seconds and add them together and take the square root, my units work out. They're still seconds. But that's silly. Don't, don't do that. Duration of song and year they're released, yeah, they're both time, but they're not really commensurate in any other way. Um, and certainly I might want to offset, by the way, the fact that I came from 1995 and 2017, I might want to say, hey, look at the, don't look at the distance from 0 BC, look at the number of years since, you know, 2000 or something like that. That might give numbers that contribute better to a weight, but even that seems awfully contrived. Whew, this is, this is a tough one. Weighting can be a bit of an art, but any other comparisons seem really uh, rough. And that's where we have the Mahalanobis distance. Okay, uh, and this is going to take care of the fact that some of these might be in seconds and others in years. In fact, you know, there might be entirely incommensurate things. Some of them might be in seconds and other columns might be in number of stars. How do you compare that? And so Mahalanobis, um, named after an Indian mathematician, and here's a pretty simple idea. Go through your data set, and what we're going to do before measuring any distances we're going to go and compute the, the average value. So the average length in seconds, the average year, uh, the average rating, okay? And then when you come to a particular uh, one object, say, hey, what is the distance between my value and the average value? Okay, that's gonna, that sort of helps rectify some of these different differences. Um, it's still a bit tough because the average, you know, between the years and the average between the star ratings. Star ratings can never average by more than five, or differ by more than five from the average. Probably more like, can never be more than two or three from the average. While as years can be a lot from the average, and suddenly they're contributing a lot to my overall distance. Um, so here's the other thing Mahalanobis did. It said, okay, go ahead and compute the mean for each field, uh, and go ahead and compute the standard deviation for each field, and compute the distance from the mean in terms of the standard, how many standard deviations are you away? So, hey, here's a song that is uh, one standard deviation away from the average duration and three standards deviations away from the release year. Okay? Um, that suddenly, those are now sort of interesting numbers, the fact that I can use one half and three, or one and three. Um, yeah, that starts to get more interesting. And now here's the cool thing. I can also now compare that with saying, hey, it was three standard deviations on the year away, and it was seven standard deviations away from the average rating on number of stars. And suddenly now that seven can really contribute a lot, dwarfing the difference in year. Um, because, hey, that that rating was really a far away from, from the average. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, this is pretty nice. The nice thing about this is we can now compare different units. All of our values, when we talk about number of standard deviations away from the mean, that's going to be a unitless number. And now I can add them and, you know, if I'm squaring and square rooting, I can be combining them and I'm not doing weird things with units that would make my unit analysis seem funky. So that's kind of cool. Um, so that's the basic idea. Now, uh, Mahalanobis is turning over in his grave right now saying, what do you mean? That's not what you need to do. Here's the real secret you need to do. You need to go and once you go ahead and compute the 
uh, difference on each column in the standard deviation, go ahead and find the covariance matrix among all your fields, okay? To take care of the fact that, hey, year might have a very strong correlation with duration, okay? Maybe some years we just had a really, you know, the punk rock years, songs were 45 seconds and anything longer was, was unnecessary. Um, and so you don't want that information to get taken into account too much. So you set up a covariance matrix. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, here's where you go and you can use the software packages built for you that will go ahead and do things like that. Mahalanobis, you now sort of have an idea what that means. It's the right way to compare data uh, if you're trying to com compare distances between data uh, and they're totally different units uh, and or meanings. Okay, so take this number of standard deviations away from the mean, and now you have a comparable number that's comparable across fields. Okay. Now we can go and start talking about writing algorithms that can go ahead and cluster data now that we know how to have some concept of distance between two data points.